Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and on today's video, I'm going to show you how to update the BIOS on your MSI B550 Tomahawk motherboard using a USB stick and updating via the MSI BIOS. Keep watching to find out more. Okay, so in this video today, we're going to be showing you how to update the BIOS on your B550 Tomahawk motherboard. Now, this is going to be a slightly different video. Generally, people will be watching the video on this to see how to actually flash it via USB when you've got a new board and you're updating for a new processor using the BIOS flashback method. This video is going to be more tailored around those that have already got a working system and just want to update the BIOS, or perhaps you're kind of pre-installing a BIOS ready for a new processor when you've already got a working system. If you want to find out how to do it from scratch, if you've got a brand new board with an incompatible processor, then you can check out the video up here, which will show you how to do it with a bare board and just a USB stick. So let's get into the video. So obviously this is the MSI B550 Tomahawk board. Things you're going to need to flash the BIOS on this is obviously a working computer, as we've got from the machine behind us, which is what we'll be recording this on. You'll also need, obviously, access to the internet to download the latest BIOS, and also you'll need a compatible USB stick to download the BIOS onto, and also for the motherboard to flash from. So, first of all, let's go to the computer, and I'll show you how to get the latest BIOS, how to put it onto your USB stick, and how to prepare the USB stick. So the first thing we're going to want to do here is to plug in our USB stick. Now this is a uh, slightly older stick, I think, so we're going to put it into a USB 2 port, but you can put it into pretty much wherever you want. Now, very common with these, it's worth doing a quick format on your drive just to be on the safe side. Make sure the drive's FAT32 and the default allocation size unit set to default, or the allocation size unit, so set to default. If there's a volume label in here, you can also remove that if there is one. Not entirely uh, necessary, but I generally do it just for kind of one less thing to have to worry about. So once you've selected those settings, hit start and it'll tell you that it will remove all data on the disk, which uh, we're fine with because this is a, a blank disk anyway. Obviously, if there's anything on the disk you want to keep, now is probably a good time to do it. So there is the format complete, so that is that section done, so we can close this window. The next part is to actually obtain the BIOS for the board. So open up your browser of choice. We're going to use Google Chrome, and we're going to head on over to the MSI website. So we'll go MSI B550 Tomahawk. Actually, there's a link directly there. I'll put some links in the video description for this so you can uh, go directly to it just to save you a little bit of time and effort. So once you've got the uh, the right page, just do a quick visual, make sure it's the correct board. And once you're happy that it is the right board, then you can head over to support. So we'll click on that tab there. So in the support tab, we've got various options. So we've got BIOS, driver, manual, utility, etc. In this particular one, we are only concerned with BIOS. So as you can see there, there is the latest version of the BIOS. Now this one isn't a beta BIOS, which is excellent news. So this means this is a one for sort of general consumption. And the board actually currently has version A5. Now, if you want to know how to actually see which BIOS is on your board already, there's various ways you can do it. I generally like to use CPU-Z, which we'll quickly open now. And I'll show you how you can confirm which BIOS you're actually on. So in the uh, CPU-Z, if you head over to main board, and if you look down through, you'll see the brand and the version. So we're on version A.50, which was released on this release date. So we know we've got that one already, which is that one, basically A5. So we can go to A6, which is the very latest version. This was released on the 17th of the 5th, 2021. So we can download that. So click on the download arrow on the side there. And you get options of where you want to actually download it to. I generally go to the desktop, first of all, because it is going to be a... A zipped file so we're going to need to extract it so once you're happy with the location click on save often people ask me why i do it to the desktop and not straight to the usb stick and there's a couple of reasons for that one i may want to get the file at a later date so there is that to it but also as well when you're extracting files generally it's a little bit faster and more reliable to extract a file on a hard disk than it is actually a usb stick so anyway, that is downloaded now, so we can close that window, and we, uh, we're done here, so we can close this. So this is our zipped file. Now yours may look slightly different, depending on which zip program you've got. You can just use the built-in Windows extraction tool, but we're going to use WinZip in this instance. So choose Extract To, and Extract To a folder, name that, and there we go. That is going to be much quicker than doing it on a USB stick. So here is our folder, double-click on that, 
and inside the folder there'll be another folder and there's two files. One is a text file which tells you what the BIOS update is all about, etc., what it does. Uh, not a great deal of information there, so you can ignore that one. But this is the important file that we want. So this is our A60 file, which is actually the BIOS file. Now when we're doing this from the BIOS itself, we don't need to rename the file. When you're doing this from a USB stick for a standalone USB flash, then you would have to rename this file. But in this particular instance, we don't need to. So all we need to do is to highlight this file and we'll drag it and we'll put it onto our USB drive. There we go, that's copied across. And just to make sure, we can click on USB drive and we can see there is our file. So we're happy with that. So what we can do now is to shut the computer down and go into the BIOS. Now there's various ways you can do that. You can just mash the delete key when your system's rebooting. Or certainly a nice easy way of doing it is if you press and hold the shift key, then go down to the Windows flag, click on the power icon and choose restart. Keep on holding the shift key and very shortly we'll get another message coming up saying about what we want to do in the kind of safe mode or at least it used to be safe mode back in previous versions of Windows. So now we've got choose an option. So we can choose troubleshoot and we can go to advanced options and we can choose this one, UEFI firmware settings. So this basically reboots into the BIOS to saves you mashing the delete key. So we're going to select that one, confirm the change there, hit restart and then we can go back into our BIOS. Now I've got the USB stick still actually in the computer. You can put it in after like a, a hot plug kind of device. And there we go. There is our MSI BIOS and we didn't have to mash the delete key at all. So we will be doing a complete BIOS tour of this board after we've done the update. So if you want to see how that goes, click on the subscribe button and the chime icon and you'll see when that is next released. But what we want to do now is we want to go in and actually flash the BIOS. Now it's really simple from here, either in uh, advanced mode or easy mode. So from either way, this is the easy mode. So you can just click on M flash down here. Or if you're in the advanced mode, again, you can just click on M flash. So let's go ahead and click on M flash. And it will say here, the system will automatically reboot and enter flash mode. Do you want to enter flash mode? Uh, yes, we definitely do. Obviously, if you're unsure, click on no. Either reach out to us on our Discord or ask me a question in the comment section. And I'll try and get back to you as soon as I possibly can. Discord is obviously going to be the faster method. But if you do need a bit of help and you're a little bit unsure, then please do get in touch. But we're happy, so I'm going to click on yes. The PC will shut down in its entirety and then it will boot back up very shortly after. So you'll be uh, on a black screen or no signal screen for a little while. So here we are in the, uh, the M flash. Now I've deliberately taken the, uh, the key out, the USB key, just so if you actually find this message is because you've got it in a port which it doesn't like. So click on retry and then it will find it. So we've got our scan this one and there is our BIOS. So basically just select the uh, particular one and it says are you sure you want to select this file obviously make sure it is the right file name etc when you're happy just click on yes and you'll get this screen saying that the boss is updating now at this point the uh, the keyboard and mouse will actually be locked out so you can't do anything with the keyboard and mouse and ideally don't do anything with the computer don't press the power button don't press the reset button don't remove anything just literally put your hands in your pockets and uh yeah, just wait, just be patient. Now I'm gonna fast forward through the rest of this process because obviously you don't wanna watch a process bar, but I will give you an update at the end to let you know approximately how long this should take you on your system, uh, just so you've got an idea if there's something actually gone wrong or if it's hung or anything along those lines. So I'm gonna fast forward from this section onwards and we'll be back towards the end. Okay, so we've come up to 100% uh, now. We'll just wait briefly. We should hear the system power down. You may find, depending on your system and how it's configured, that there'll be potentially one or maybe even two reboots. If you keep an eye on your diagnostic DLEDs, you should see it go through CPU memory. If it goes CPU memory, CPU memory, CPU memory a few times, that is where the board is uh, reset to its default. So it's doing the standard AMD memory training which is a very common thing, so don't panic too much if it doesn't come back up straight away. The BIOS update itself uh, started roughly about five minutes, I think it was, so almost the same sort of time as if you were doing it from the traditional kind of USB flashback method, or 
guess the modern way, I suppose you'd call it these days. So now we're just waiting for the system to boot up and hopefully it should go straight into Windows if there's been no changes. And yep, there we go. And there we are, we're back into Windows with uh, very little fuss. And if we quickly head over into uh, CPU-Z, or CPU ID rather, from CPU-Z, and we're checking mainboard, there we go, see, so version 8.60 with the new AMD AGISA code combo, which is version 1.2.0.2. Awesome, so that is, uh, that is the job done. Essentially, that is it. You can, if you want to now, go back into your BIOS, load optimized defaults and then reset everything if you wanted to but i think most people will probably be quite happy that they've got to this point and everything appears to be working as it should do now one thing i think it has changed is actually the fan control profile so you can probably hear that the uh, the fan control or the fans themselves are uh, ramped up a little bit so cpu fan is a little bit high pump fan is where we expect to see so i think it's probably going to be our chassis fan so we go into system fan, yeah, that's uh, way too high. Yeah, it looks like we need to take a look at that. I think in the BIOS has probably changed it to uh, volts DC rather than PWM. So yeah, we, uh, we certainly need to take a look at that in the BIOS. But other than that, I think it's uh, pretty much uh, all done. So I think that's uh, about time we rounded this video off and I'll give you some last tips in the outro. Okay, so there we go, we're back, uh, the system's back up and oh, running, it's just reloaded the, uh, the RGB there as you can see. So yeah, pretty good, all done. Now some tips that I would probably suggest for those of you that may be experiencing issues. So one thing is, uh, because this is all BIOS related and also USB related, which is integral to the BIOS, you may find at certain instances you may need to plug in devices into other ports. Now using the flash method from the actual front mounted USB ports on the system, it's probably not the best of ideas. Sometimes there are some weird quirks that come along with USB front mounted headers. So certainly once you've got the BIOS onto your USB stick, ideally plug it into one of the USB 2 ports on the back of your motherboard or USB 3. USB 2 is probably gonna be more reliable, but certainly USB 2 or USB 3 on the back are preferable than using front mounted USB ports. If you're having issues flashing your BIOS um, in any way, then obviously that is one of the first things I would check. Also as well, because it's using the USB section, if you've got a USB keyboard and mouse, which pretty much, I guess, 95% of people these days probably will have, um, you may need to switch ports out. So if you go into the BIOS flashing section and you've got no keyboard or mouse control, then you might need to unplug your keyboard and mouse and plug it into different ports just so you can uh, navigate around that section. Luckily, I haven't had that instance, so uh, I'm okay. But if you're getting any issues with that, and certainly I've heard from people in the past that that has been the case, definitely try that. Again, if you've got any comments, questions, problems, or anything you're just not feeling utterly confident about, please, please do reach out to us in the comments section below, or we've got a fantastic Discord community with uh, tons and tons of tech support operatives on there, including myself, so if you need any help, then uh, please do feel free to reach out to us. So hopefully that's cleared up the, uh, the myths and uh, the downfalls that can potentially happen with flashing your USB BIOS. I've been Mike, this is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks very much for watching.